Again, if you're here for the first time, we thank you for joining us, worshiping with us. Uh, it's exciting because we're, start, we're starting a brand new series and we're going to talk about, uh, itong series ito, no? What Shapes Us, we're going to talk about uh, our statement of faith as a church no? for the next six Sundays. So, mo sa katab- uh, katabi mo, six Sundays, okay, wag kang mawawala, okay. <laughs> so, i-unpack natin yan ngayong gabi. And as we talk about this, uh, siguro parang ano lang, balik tanaw lang. Last uh, two Sundays, we've invited uh, our two missionaries. If you remember, we had Pastor TJ uh, two Sundays back. And then we had uh, Pastor Carlo last week uh, talk about our series on dead end to doorways. Munti ko na sabihin doorways to dead end. Uh, kasi nung napanood ko si Pastor Anthony kaninang umaga. No? But dead end to doorways. No? And we have been talking about, it's something that we allot each year because yun yung heart ng Lord. Eh. Uh, the heart of God is to reach nations. And most probably yung katabi mo may passport na at nakabiyahe na yan. Tama ba? Mukha bang nakabiyahe na to? O mukha bang babiyahe na siya this week? No? Uh, yun ang heart ng Lord. Eh, no? The heart of God is uh, really nations to be reached out, and that's why we have been sending cross-cultural missionaries for decades already. With uh, nga, ang church victory is already 39 years, and we're celebrating 40 years next year. Wow, grabe! Palakpakan naman natin si Lord, no? 40 years of God's goodness. Uh, when I got when I got saved, when I Christian, ako, I was uh, victory was eight years old. Okay, 1992. Uh, yung iba yata sa atin, hindi pa pinapanganak. Okay, pero ganun, na, ganun, ka, ganun ka tindi yung ginagawa ng Panginoon ngayon, hindi lamang sa Manila, but all over the Philippines and of course, uh, into the rest of the world. You know? And so why do we need to talk about the statement of faith, our statement of faith? But pakalangan natin pag-usapan, okay? Why is this significant? You see, the statement of faith tells us what is important and what is non-negotiable. Okay? For some families, non-negotiable sa hapagkainan ang walang baboy. Hindi pa, tama ba? Tama ba yung pagkakasabi ko? Yung walang meat. I mean, walang pork. Di ba? Tama ba? Meron ba sa inyo hindi pwedeng walang pork pag kumakain kayo? Mapabarbecue yan, sisig, uh, ano pa ba? Yung, ano yung utak? Yung, uh, ha? Sisig, ano pa, mga sinigang na baboy, chicken pork adobo, di ba? Iba-iba eh, no? Ng uh, families. Iba sa inyo, nagutom bigla. Pastor, 6.30 na, bilisan mo na. Okay. But again, um, we're, we're talking about this because we're talking about things like this, the statement of faith, uh, faith, because this is what truly matters and what's truly important for us as a church, no? Basically, as a movement, no? And we're basically talking about uh, doctrines and beliefs that we have been holding on to for the last 39 years, of course, and beyond. Ano. In short, itong statement of faith, it provides an avenue for us and for the church to talk about the doctrinal uh, truths that we hold on to uh, and what we value and what has been guiding us. Okay? Ito yung gusto nating pag-usapan. You see, uh, ito makikita natin, victory and every nation, ito yung statement of faith natin. In fact, you can surf that in our internet at, uh, at the website, victory.org.ph at makikita nyo labing dalawa yan. We're talking about the first six, but by next year, we're gonna talk about the last six para alam natin. And hopefully, when you decide, when you pray, and when you decide to make this your church, at least alam mo, ah, ito pala yung binavalue natin, ito pala yung mga pinanghahawakan natin. And I want you to know, hindi lang natin ito napag-usapan o napag-isip-isipan over, you know, along the way. But the statement of faith that we're gonna talk about for the next six Sundays, and even from those that you would see from our website, was based from the Apostles' Creed. How many of you know the Apostles' Creed? Okay? If you've been attending a Mass, nung Katoliko pa tayo, di ba? Uh, it's something that has been mentioned every Sunday, right? Binabanggit to lagi. And the Apostles' Creed was, uh, it began with the words, We believe. Tama? Kung hindi ka natutulog, di ba? Alam mo yan, ah, we believe. Yun agad ang marinig mo, di ba? Now, it is said to have been written and formulated some 150 years after the apostles of Jesus passed away. Okay? It wasn't necessarily written by one of the apostles, 
but somehow through the writings that we now found from the scripture, okay, pinagsama-sama yan, 150 years after the last apostle died and it became the Apostles' Creed. Now, it was intended to define and bring clarity to what the church believed in. So, dun tayo nang gagaling. Kaya natin pinag-uusapan yung statement of faith. Now, the Apostles' Creed was also written to defend what we believe in. When we say defend, remember, thousands of years ago, when the church, when Jesus already ascended into heaven and the church started in Acts chapter 2, this was like 2,000 years ago, maraming heresies. Okay? Kaya yung salitang fake news, hindi siya bago. Dahil 2,000 years ago, marami ng fake news. At kailangan pag-usapan, o kailangan yung Apostles' Creed para magsilbing gabay sa mga early Christians. In fact, not only uh, do they need to defend their faith, but the Apostles' Creed also declares okay, a statement. In fact, noon, uh, in ancient times, bago mabaptize ang isang Kristiyano, they would have to recite the Apostles' Creed. They would have to declare it. And whenever they recite it, this is not just memorizing, but when they declare it, it's as if they're saying, I'm cutting off any ties that I have with my previous religious or paganic practices and allegiances. So, ganun katindi yung Apostles' Creed. Hindi lang nila memorize dahil required ng uh, school, okay, o nung dating religion nila. Now, the beliefs we hold on to shape our lives. Now, how many of you, every end of the year, di ba, pag mag-welcome ka ng bagong taon, tumatalun ka? Okay, yung sa inyo, talagang naniniwala kayo, no? Meron ba rito, nung tumalun ka, nung 12.01, feeling mo tumangkad ka ng one inch. <laughs> di ba? Yung iba, yung iba sa atin, talon ng talon, di ba? Taon-taon, tumatalon, gabuhok lang yung... Pastor, gabuhok lang yung nilaki ko. Da, pasalamat pa ako dahil makapalambuhok ko kaya mukha ako matangkad. No? Belief, no? Some people, naniniwala sila na kapag may nakasalubong daw silang itim na pusa, ay siswertehin sila. Ay, de, hindi pala. Mamalasin, di ba? Belief, again, another belief that we probably hold on to. Some people, tuwing uh, Chinese New Year, di ba, tinatagtag nila ng napakaraming round fruits. Naalala ko yun, nung bata kami, no? coming from a Chinese background. Ganun eh, no? But, again, the beliefs we hold on to can shape our lives. And when we look at the realities of life, the beliefs we hold on to have eternal consequences as well. And the reality is, kung mali yung pundasyon ng theological beliefs natin, it can have serious eternal repercussion sa ating lahat bilang Kristiyano. Kaya natin kailangan itong pag-usapan, no? Now, uh, let us read our first statement of faith no, for every nation. And uh, I'm going to invite you to stand because after we read the first statement, itong first statement about God, we're going to go straight to reading the first two verses uh, in Genesis chapter 1, okay? So, you can recite this with me, okay, if it's okay. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, he is perfect and unchanging, completely loving, good, and holy, limitless in knowledge, power, and presence. God eternally exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in essence, having the same divine attributes and perfections, with each person fulfilling distinct roles, gracious in His eternal purpose to redeem a people for Himself, God is worthy of wholehearted love and worship. Now, let's open our Bibles. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, you can open it to the first two verses in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, kung hindi nyo alam saan ang Genesis chapter 1, katabi po siya ng table of contents. Ayan, okay. First book in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, in darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Lord, uh, your word is likened to a hammer. And our prayer tonight, if there are old mindsets, 
unbiblical beliefs and mindsets and practices that we are carrying tonight, I pray as we go through the scripture and go through the statement of faith that has been based from the beliefs that have been handed down from our uh, from the early church, we are praying, God, that speak to each one of us. Let there be clarity. Let there be an illumination that could come only through the aid of the Holy Spirit. Speak to us tonight. Allow this word to minister to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's all take our seats. All right. Now, who is God to you growing up? Okay, para sa yo, ano bang concept mo about God? Okay, uh, can you turn to somebody beside you? Share mo lang yung sagot mo. Sino pa si God sa yo nung lumalaki ka? O nung, you know, growing up? Okay, sige, magkaroon lang tayo ng interaction. Uh, kung hindi mo kilala yung katabi mo, at least makapagkilala ka, no? Kahit papano, medyo may bagong friend ka. No? Sige, go ahead, just share your answer. Wala naman right or wrong answer yan. Okay, sige lang, go ahead. Let's take maybe the next 20 seconds. All right. Meet. Mamaya na lang yung kwentuhan pagkain. Uy, ano kakainin mo mamaya ang gabi? Mamaya na yan. Okay, God muna yung pag-usapan natin. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so at least meron tayong discovery. Ah, ito pala ang concept niya about God. Uh, I remember growing up, no, I think some of you know that I came from a Chinoy family. Okay, hindi naman obvious, di ba? Uh, I came from a Chinoy family and basically, me, medyo dalawang religion kasi yung uh, kinalakihan ko, eh, no? Um, my parents were born in Manila uh, to Chinese, uh, you know, Chinese parents. And... Somehow, because they grew up in Manila, in embrace na nila yung Roman Catholic belief, practices, all that. And while we were growing up, they, my dad, in particular, imparted that to us. Okay, uh, we would go to Quiapo, We would, uh, uh, may mga certain days, uh, uh, certain Sundays that we would go there. But then my mom, because uh, she was more of a, a, a Buddhist type, no, uh, dinadala niya ako sa Nara. Alam niyo bang Nara Street? malapit to sa Tutuban, meron dung uh, malaking ano no, may malaking temple dun. and I would go, we would go there, and he would bring, my mom would bring me there. so somehow no, dalawang religious perspective yung kinalakihan ko no, and uh, yet at, at the same time, the Protestant influence got into me when I studied at St. Stephen's. Okay. It's a Protestant Episcopalian school. Uh, kung familiar kayo sa area ng Chiang Kai, Uno High School, doon naman ako nag-aral. No? And, you know, some of us have differing backgrounds. And somehow, ito mga iba't ibang backgrounds na meron tayo, okay, can shape the way we look at God today. Yung concept natin, yung understanding natin of who God is. For some people, they would see God as... Uh, uh, someone uh, who would probably punish sinners and would bless and favor people who would be obedient to Him. Parang Santa Claus, if you're naughty, <laughs> diba? Magi be careful if you're naughty or nice, diba? depending dun sa merits and demerits mo. Now, some people would see God in a different way. Okay? Another group might have an understanding that, you know, God is very detached to my world because of the many difficulties that I'm going through. And parang wala siyang pakialam sa akin. Well, another, another group would probably have a perspective about God as a very generous God. I can ask Him for, for anything, anytime. And then when I have answered prayers, Lord, okay, thank you, ah. Diyan ka na muna. And go on with my life, okay? So, iba-iba tayo ng perspective about God. While we may have different understandings about God, maybe concepts or ideas about God, allow me to share to you three declarations we can derive from the statement of faith on God. Okay, yung binasa natin kanina. Tatlong uh, uh, statements no? or declarations. The first declaration, let's go through the first statement. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer, 
of all things. When we go back to verses 1 and, verses one and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? The earth was without form and void. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Pabalikan natin yung verse 1. Sabi ron, in the beginning, God. Okay? When everything was formless and void and empty, God was already there. Okay? The Bible does not try to prove that God exists. Okay? Instead, the Bible lets us know God exists because of what we see in the world around us. Now, there was a point in the universe history Okay, when there was nothing, okay, no life forms, no heavenly bodies, no planets, no sun, uh, no nice sunsets, walang magandang sandy beaches. Maybe some of you just came from Boracay, kasi maganda mag Boracay ngayon. Wala pa to mga to, okay? Wala ring gilas Pilipinas na nanalo sa Asian Games. Kakauwi lang kanina. Ay, iba, iba talaga na naod eh, no? Okay, kahit na tinalo nila yung kadugo ko. Okay lang. <laughs> diba? <laughs> diba? Wala pa itong mga ito noong mga panahon na yan, ano? But based on Genesis chapter 1, God created something out of nothing. Okay? God created something out of nothing. I remember during pandemic, one of the projects or deliverables of my youngest son, uh, yung anak ko noong 2020, ilang taon? Eight years old, Okay? So at eight, okay, medyo mal- short pa siya nung time na yon. And here's the my son. Uh, kailangan niya mag kailangan niya magpakita ng kasi video pa noon, eh, no? 2020 pandemic. Kailangan niya magpakita ng proof na nagluto siya. Okay, hindi ko alam anong subject yun, nakalimutan ko na. Were, uh, home economics ba yun or something. So sabi niya, "Okay, I'm gonna cook." Ano ba 'to? Sinigang. Okay. So Talaga, ayan, di ba? Pinikturan ko yan noong 2020. I think this was like April or April or May. Okay? So, pinikturan ko, nagluto siya. Di ba? Ganun pa siya, no? Proud na proud siya do sa accomplishment niya. And alam naman natin, hindi naman babagsak ang rekado sa harap mo. Gusto ko ng sinigang. Di ba? Wala namang ganun. Kailangan mong mamalengke. Tama ba? Kailangan mo ng manok, kailangan mo ng uh, tomato, kailangan mo ng sili. Tama ba? Sili, no? Kailangan mo ng... Uh, Tinola pala, sorry. Ay, tinola pala yan. Mali pala tingin ko. Ano ba yan? Kasi paborito niya, sinigang eh. O basta ganun. <laughs> ganun na lang eh. Alam natin, pag nagluluto tayo, kailangan natin ng rekado. Tama? Okay? You need raw materials for you to produce something. Yun, may konting, uh, may konting bawi, di ba? Now, humanly speaking, well, before we go to that, tingnan natin, ano, we talked about God creating something out of nothing. Okay? Pero sa atin, kailangan natin ng pagsisimulan. Kailangan mo ng raw material. Kailangan mo ng, yan, kagaya niyan, Ricardo. Now, when you look at Michelangelo, uh, literary, a giant, lit, uh, a literary giant, a legend, okay, in classical, dalawa, di ba? May dalawa siya, dalawang, uh, kumbaga, dalawang artistic expressions siya kilala eh. From sculpting, to painting, okay? Ito yung uh, picture ng sculpture niya, Pieta and David, okay? Yung sa kanan, ano? Ito yung masterpieces niya. From the painting, it's the Sistine Chapel painting that we can find in Vatican today. And I think nasa kabilang building yata yun. May parang display dun, ano? Or something. May exhibit. Now, think about it. Michelangelo wouldn't be able to carve out a masterpiece like this without Stone or marble? Marbled stone. Wala ring Sistine Chapel kung walang paint, kung walang brush, kung wala yung canvas na kakailanganin niya or whatever raw material he would need. Okay? And, you know, while we are finite beings, tayo, who could simply operate on the natural senses, di ba, pag sinabi nating natural senses, sense of touch, hearing, all that, Based in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we can learn that God's domain is and will always be the supernatural. Ito yung domain ng Panginoon. Okay? Which is why we can say, and the Bible is saying, God okay, created something out of nothing. Now, Nehemiah, 
uh, thousands of years after the creation, Nehemiah, the Jewish leader, during the reign of the Persian Empire, or after the Jews started going back, kasi di ba nagkaroon ng Babylonian captivity, after the prophecy was fulfilled that they would be sent back to Jerusalem, Nehemiah led the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem. Okay? And in Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, while he was praying and leading the Jewish remnant in prayer, etong sabi niya, You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve all of them. And the host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You see, this Jew, okay, as a Jew who feared God and he worshipped God, the fundamental revelation was that God alone is the creator who guided him. Okay? God alone is the creator who guided him. He may have lived in a poly, you know, polytheistic society at that time when there were, you know, neighboring countries who would worship gods and goddesses. It was clear from this prayer he had before the Lord, Lord, isa lang ang Diyos. Sa'yo kami maniniwala. Kahit naparusahan mo kami dahil matigas ang ulo namin, kahit galing kami sa captivity for 70 years, now we're back. We're pledging our hearts and allegiance before you again. Think about it. Ganun yung revelation sa kanya, Lord, isa lang talaga ang Diyos. Sa'yo lang kami maniniwala. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, we see that every time God speaks, something comes to existence. I was counting in Genesis chapter 1, nine times the words God said appeared. And every time the word, every time God would say something, okay, may makikreate out of nothing. From birds, no, to reptiles, to the sky, the heavenly bodies, all those were created from a mere breath. Okay? Sa, mi, sa mismong hininga ng Panginoon at salita ng Panginoon, lumalabas yung creation niya. Psalm 33, verses 6 and 7, in the New Living Translation, it says, The Lord merely spoke, and this was one psalmist uh, who said this, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoir. You see, the Word of God is very powerful. And when He speaks, something comes to existence. In fact, the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, in the Amplified Translation, it says, Now to Him who is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly, grabe, no? Can you imagine? Abundant. Tapos ang ginamit niya pang term dito, super Gaano pa kaya ka abundant yung abundant na yan, you know? Do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to His power that is at work within us. Who is able to carry the purpose of your life? It's not your best friend. It's not the company you're working with. It's not the thriving business you probably have. It's not your own aspirations. It's God Himself who can bring that superabundance. It's God Himself who can infinitely fulfill the things that He has in mind for your life. This is the God that we serve, the one who created something out of nothing. God alone is the creator, and not only did God create something out of nothing, God is also the sustainer of all things. Hindi lamang siya naglikha ng mga bagay out of nothing. God sustains all things. Consider this. Probably, if you lived during the 80s at grade schooler ka, hanggang 90s, hanggang year 2005, okay, merong hangganan, ano? But of course, if you lived during the 70s and 60s, we probably encountered this in science, okay? Sino sa inyo favorite mo ang science subject? Okay, yan. May mga, mga ilan-ilan. Sino sa inyo tinutulugan mo ang science subject? Okay, hindi ka interested, ano? 
Lumaki tayo with an understanding that there are a total of nine planets in the solar system, right? Okay. Sino sa inyo memorize nyo pa? Kahit pabalibaligtad, alam nyo. Alam ko yan, di ba? Okay. Pinakamaliit na planeta. Huwag na lang, hindi naman science class to, no? But by 2006 of August, okay, the International Astronomical Union downgraded the status of Pluto. Ha? Yung aso ni Mickey Mouse? Hindi, hindi yun. Kapangalan niya lang yun, ano? Pluto. Dinowngrade siya, hindi na raw siya planeta. Kaya pag nag-google ka ngayon ng solar system, walong planeta na lang, hindi na siya. Okay, baka yung iba sa inyo, talaga, akala ko siya pa din. <laughs> 2006 yun, ano? so that's 17 years ago. Now, what's the point here? Okay, We can see, okay, sabi ni David, no? Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2, how the blue sky and constellation point to God's magnificence and glory. If there's a designer, if there's a design, there's always a designer, an intelligent one. Na hindi lamang siya in a snap of a finger or suddenly out of a big bang, lumabas na lang yan by chance. Somebody created something out of nothing. And David recognized it. He said in verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. A few days back, um, I was talking to um, yung isa sa mga staff ng mother-in-law ko. And sabi ko, oh, may project daw, ang, may, may business kasi yung, mom in, yung mother-in-law ko. And uh, siya yung driver, no? So, galing daw silang Legaspi. And I think you're probably aware that um, si Taal Volcano, di ba? Minsan may konting movement and all that. May konting activity. Sabi ko, so, babalik kayo ng Legaspi? Sabi ko ganun. Yes, yeah, sabi niya, babalik kami Legaspi kasi may project doon uh, sa air conditioning. And uh, sabi ko sa kanya, so, paano yan? Pagka nagka, nag-ano uli, nagka-activity uli ang Taal. Sabi niya, sanay na kami dyan. Sabi niya ganun. In fact, paggabi, ang ganda eh. Yung, di ba, may, may nakita siguro kayo sa, ano, no, sa internet, sa news. Paggabi, di ba, pinipicturean pa ng mga tao. Sabi niya, sabi ng mga tagaron, yung perfect cone, okay? Tatlong hektarya daw yung laki. Sabi ko, ha? Ganun kalaki yun? Can you imagine? Sa picture, from afar, when you're very far away, akala mo lang, mas maliit pa sa piso, yung butas. Okay? But, of course, those who live at the slope, sa may baba, alam nila na napakalaki at napaka-massive ng Mayon Volcano. Can you imagine kung walang gagawa nun, bigla na lang lumabas na parang kabuti yun? Is it even possible by chance? Definitely, there is somebody who created something out of nothing. Think about it. In the orbit, di ba? May mga planeta na nag Merong orbit. Eight planets would go around the orbit. Have you ever wondered, paano kaya kung biglang magkaroon ng, alam mo yun, mamisalign? Paano kung nawala yung planet Earth? Okay. Which we probably would, would, would uh, mapapanood natin siguro sa mga movies, ano, na may mga uh, somehow uni- uh, problem in the universe. And yet, we can look at the Bible and be reminded that there's a God who sustains all things. Kaya in order ang universe. Some scientists estimate that there are a total of 25 million shooting stars or meteorites that would come to Earth daily. Daily to, ha? Akala ko nga, nagkamali ako ng basa. 25 million meteorites that would come down to Earth daily. And you know how God would protect humans? from potential, you know, cataclysmic clashes through the heat of the atmosphere na susunog yung mga tinatawag na meteorites or mga uh, space debris. And by the time it reaches the earth, hindi na siya bulalakaw, gaya ng kwento sa panday. Okay? Maliit na bato na lang siya na tinatawag nating shooting stars and harmless na siya. In fact, pinipicturean pa ng mga tao kapag gabi. Tama ba? Meron pa sa inyo nakakita na ng shooting stars? Okay, di ba? So, tas nagwi-wish kayo. <laughs> Ayun lang naman yung sabi nila, di ba? 
You see, the universe in or- is in order because not only is God the creator, but God is also the sustainer of all things. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we believe in. Nothing can happen by chance. Look at verse 17 of Colossians chapter 1. In the Amplified Translation, it says, He himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. His is the controlling, cohesive force for the universe. Nothing happens by chance. Everything is within God's control. Ang tanong, chaotic ba buhay mo? If you look at your life today, meron bang mga bagay sa buhay mo, concern sa buhay mo na parang walang, wala ka ng control, hindi mo na alam anong gagawin mo? Do you feel anxious, worried, sick about the future? Oh, Lord, paano ba to? 6.1 ang inflation rate, baka tumaas pa daw. Uh, paano yung economy natin? Paano yung Russia, Ukraine, more than one year na nag, nag, nagbabanatan? Lord, yung gasolina, taas ng taas, di ba? Mataas na naman, di ba? From the same period of last year, ganito yung presyo ng gas. Ano ba mangyayari sa Pilipinas? Ano ba mangyayari sa mundo? It might look like chaotic ang mundo natin, chaotic, maaring ang bansa natin, sa tingin natin, but we have a God who sustains us, who can sustain us through the difficulties and challenges of life. God will sustain you, and God alone is the creator and sustainer of all things. Second part of this statement of faith, let's take a look. It says here, He is perfect and unchanging, completely loving, good, holy, limitless in knowledge, power, and presence. You may have heard of this oft-repeated statement. The only thing permanent in this world is change. Okay, alam na alam niya, di ba? Ito yung madalas nating marinig. And that's true because each year, nagbabago naman ng, alibawa, kung may sanggol ka, in a few years' time, maybe actually in a few weeks' time, ang mga babies ngayon, mabilis ang motor development. Di ba? Mabilis yung development ng uh, mga babies. Eventually, uh, they would become kids. Di ba? Kaya minsan, marininig mo yung expression ng magulang, anak, don't grow too fast. Kakapanganak lang kung ngayon, bukas, sinasabihan mo, anak, don't grow too fast. Di ba? Baka super baby yun, ano? Pero bakit ganun, di ba? Kasi alam na part ng buhay yung change. And I think we all know this, March of 2020, when the pandemic hit, change became so real to all of us. Sobrang totoo siya, ano bang bundok yung kitang-kita pag nasa 50th floor ka? Di ba may Sierra Madre, kitang-kita? Na, 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 nabaltaan nyo ba yon? Mga April or May of 2020. Change is so real, and sometimes change can be good, but there are times we don't like change. Tama ba? Meron ba sa inyo ayaw nyo ng change? Ayaw nyo magbago ng trabaho? Lalo na to, ayaw nyo magbago yung sweldo nyo. Huwag naman, mag, huwag naman ma-downgrade, huwag naman bumaba. Diba? Ayaw natin ang mga changes. And reality is, in as much as there are so many changes in our world today, if you remember from lockdown, we shifted to ECQ and then like MECQ, naalala niyo pa ba yun? Pastor, tama na. Ayoko na pong marinig yan. Naging GCQ, di ba? Hindi ka makabili ng barbecue pag ECQ. Uh, I mean, ang hirap, di ba? With all the changes that we have gone through, business establishment closed down, hindi na nakabalik, hindi na nakabawi. Ano pa? Jobs change, politicians would come and go. Napakadaming pagbabago sa buhay. And one of the most difficult part of change during the pandemic was when you have a loved one who passed away, hindi mo na makikita. Tama? Lalo na pag, ang, pag nakalagay sa death certificate, COVID. Kasi kailangan ng dumiretsyo sa, ano man tawag doon? Yun. Hindi mo na makikita. In fact, that happened to my sister in 2021. Very difficult. Emotional changes and all that. Despite the ruthlessness of change brought about by pandemic. Here is this truth that we can derive from this statement. God is unchanging, ever consistent. God is unchanging, ever consistent. We talk about the unchangeability of the Lord, 
Ang tawag doon, immutable. Hindi nagbabago ang Panginoon. Consistent ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. The prophet Malachi, speaking to a generation of Jews who refused to obey the Lord, he gave a prophetic word, and this was what he said regarding the unchanging nature of God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, in the Amplified Translation, For I am the Lord, I do not change, but remain faithful to my covenant with you. That is why you, O sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. Think about it. If you read the background of Malachi, they came from, ito na yung Jewish remnant, bumalik na sila, they started building houses, gumaganda na buhay nila, after the pandemic, kumbaga kung yun ang pandemic nila, they started building, ang ganda na ng life nila, but they totally forgot about God. How many of you could relate to that? Minsan, pagkakomportable na buhay mo, medyo nalilimutan mo si Lord. Honestly. Di ba minsan ganun ang, ganun ang trade-off minsan ng progress? Bago kotse mo, bago bahay mo, di ba? Nakakalimutan natin minsan ng Panginoon. Kasi komportable na lahat. Kaya minsan, Mas nagtatribe ang tao kapag mahirap ang buhay kasi you go to God. Compared to comfort and convenience when there is that thought na okay lang, hindi ko naman kailangan, simple buhay lang naman ako, masaya na ako. Basta may pera ang bangko, basta kumakain kami ng sampung beses sa isang araw, okay na. Ay, di ba, sampung beses. Pilipino kasi tayo, di ba, maraming beses tayo kumain. <laughs> di ba? Minsan yun ang iniisip natin eh. But the reality is, Paano? Okay. Ito yung nangyari sa Malakay. He was addressing this. Yes, you might have forgotten me. Okay, luli. Lulubog, lilitaw yung faith natin minsan. But God was saying here, I'm not gonna change. I'm still the same God who redeemed, who called Abraham out of, you know, uh, out of uh, obscurity so that he can be great. And out of him, I'll be able to build a great nation that would be a blessing to the world. God is unchanging, ever consistent, because his plans and his purposes will always be the same. And the reason why he is like that is because his desire is to be able to draw imperfect, flawed people like us to him. Okay? Ganun yung purpose ng Panginoon. Unchanging, He's ever consistent. And look at Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs to it and is safe. Yes, we have a God who's unchanging, who's ever consistent. And you know, my prayer for all of us is that we turn to Him. Whether life is nice and easy and cool, Incomfortable, or you're walking through the fire, may we go back to Him and always consider Him and always say, God, you're my strong tower. Whatever I have today, hindi to dahil magaling ako or dahil talented ako. Whatever I have today comes from your hand, and I'm gonna worship and honor you. When we learn to hang on to His word and be reminded that He is reliable, then we can trust Him. Because this is the God that we have. God is unchanging and ever consistent. My question to you today, are you going through trying times in your family? Are you going through, you know, spiritual dryness, so to speak? No, medyo parang, Lord, parang tuyot ako ngayon spiritually. Parang ayoko magbasa ng Bible. Hindi ako masyado nagpe-pray. Parang mas may appeal sa akin yung Trabaho na lang ako ng trabaho, kumita na lang ako ng kumita. Pero in terms of spiritual, you know, spiritual things, para kung walang gana. You know what? My prayer for all of us is that we go back to Him and allow Him to deepen us in our faith because we have a God who is unchanging, a God who is ever consistent. Finally, the last part of this statement of faith Okay, that I want to share to you. God eternally exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in essence, having the same divine attributes, perfections with each person, fulfilling 
distinct role. God eternally exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. This was the tail end of the Apostle Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Sabi niya, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Ito yung shinier ni Apostle Paul as he was concluding his long letter to the church in Corinth, which uh, in the early part, pag binasa natin yung 1 Corinthians, eh, they were marked by division. There was a lot of uh, you know, controversies that affected the church. And yet, towards the end of this letter, after the issues have been resolved, he said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. From this verse alone, we can see the triune God or the Trinity at work. Okay? You probably have heard of the word Trinity. Okay? If you've been coming to church, wala po siya sa Bible, but this was a term that was coined by Tertullian okay? um, in the AD 155 who existed or who lived during AD 155 to 220. No? The word Trinity means triunity or three in oneness, okay? It is used to summarize the teaching of Scripture that God is three persons but one God, okay? In reality, parang ang hirap, parang ang hirap, ano eh, no? Ang hirap ipaliwanag sa totoo lang with the finite mind we had, okay? Probably some people would try to put the Trinity in a, an analogy, ah, para ba siyang, Ano, para ba siyang kape at gatas, three in one? Hindi. Hindi natin siya malalagay lang na ganun. Okay? It might be a mystery okay, to mankind, but we can see all over the Scripture and throughout human history how God would work harmoniously in this Godhead. You see, God, the Father, initiated and demonstrated the redemptive plan of God. For mankind. From the time Adam and Eve fell in Genesis chapter 3, God already devised the solution, the redemptive plan for mankind, which, okay, God the Son, okay, may kita natin in the Bible, okay, before that, bakit initiated and demonstrated? Romans 5 verse 8, okay? God demonstrates or God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died. For us. Now look at God the Son. What did God the Son do? God the Son, Jesus, He obeyed God the Father to the point of death. That is in Romans 5, verse 8. In order to fulfill the plan to redeem mankind. And that's in John 14, verse 31. I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. This was a time when he was explaining to the disciples what he will be doing. Ito na yung last days niya on earth. And finally, God the Spirit came to empower every believer to be God's witnesses. Acts 1 verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God, the triune God at work throughout history. Yung pinakita nating tatlong verses, these are just three of the many verses we can find in the New Testament, even in the Old Testament, of how God would work harmoniously in perfect unity. Which is why, kung titignan natin, kaya binanggit ni Apostle Paul sa dulo nung 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. Para, para bang ang point niya, hindi na sana kayo nag-away. Okay, nagkaroon ng division at nagkaroon ng controversy. If you have the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And yet, this was his benediction, blessing. Church, church in Corinth, this is my prayer for all of you. Despite the controversies, despite the challenges that you have gone through as a church, my declaration for you, is that the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be 
with you all. See, as I close this message, and we're going we're gonna to ask you to stand with me. We can all stand. There are many truths that we can derive from the statement of faith. But I believe the three okay, declar- the declarations that I shared to you are very foundational that we all need to embrace as we hold on to our Christian faith. Let's go back to and review this again. The three declarations we can derive from this statement of faith. God alone is the creator and sustainer of all things. God is unchanging and ever consistent. And finally, God eternally exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why don't we bow our heads and pray right now? We're going to worship the Lord. And before we worship God, I just want to pray for some of us here be in an attitude of solitude for a moment and allow the Lord to speak to us. With maybe a thousand and one concerns in your mind. Na kapag naaalala mo, natatakot ka, naging anxious ka, that I believe that this message things there are many promises given to me hindi nangyayari hindi natutuloy hindi natutupad we have a God who's unchanging His plans and purposes for your life remains the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever if you have concerns if you have fears, anxiety about the future, then allow His presence to reign over your heart tonight. If you're that person, I want to pray for you tonight. You can raise your hands. I want to pray for you. And then I want you to surrender that very fear you have, that very anxiety you have. Sometimes the doubts that are probably lingering in your soul. Kapag matutulog ka, naiisip mo pa rin yun. God wants to assure you He's unchanging, immutable, creator of the universe, holding things, sustaining things on the palm of His hands. Father, I commit my brothers and sisters to you tonight. You alone know what they're going through. You alone know the very questions in their minds and hearts. And you alone know the cries of their hearts. But as your people, I commit them to you. And I pray, Lord, that just as you had shown to Nehemiah, to the people during the time of Malachi, of your faithfulness and your unchangeability, I pray you would do the same to my brothers and sisters who are raising their hands. I pray, Father, that today, tonight, even this week, yes, they might face the same issues, but I pray that they they would face it differently this time. Because they know that the God that they serve, that the God that they are anchoring their faith into is unchanging, consistent, faithful. His promises will always be the same. Lord, bless them with greater faith, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father, that they would also be reminded that you're the sustainer of their faith. Sustain them with your precious word. I pray that you infuse into their soul a fresh desire to read the word, to meditate on this word, and allow this word to change them 
inside and out, Lord God. Lord, we thank you tonight and we praise you today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and the church would say, Amen and Amen. Let's all worship the Lord. Let's remain in an attitude of worship. You know, we want to minister to two groups of people today. You know, you may be in this room and you feel like, siguro, yung being reminded of this truth that Pastor Richard preached, you're reminded that you, being in a relationship with God, you can believe in God. You can hold on to God. Maybe you came here feeling more hopeless ka. But now being reminded that God is creator of all things and sustainer of all things, it is shaping your faith. And you want to walk out of this place saying, Lord, yes, I want to believe again. I don't want to just walk and think that you are a puny God, but you are a mighty God that can do immeasurably more than I can think or imagine. If that's you, I, wanna, I want you to raise your hand. And we want to ask the Lord for a fresh and filling of faith. If that's you, can raise your hand. Lord, you see the hands of your people. Lord, we're asking, Lord, that you would... First of all, God, break mindsets. Lord, if we have placed you in a box and we feel like, Lord, ganto na lang because for the past 10 years of my life, this has been the situation and ako na lang yung didiscarte. But Lord,
who you are. Lord, we put our faith in you. Just like Abraham in the midst of everything, when everything was against him, Lord, he kept believing that you are a God who can do the impossible things. And so, Lord, today, Lord, that is our faith. We believe, Lord, that you are a God. Lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Second group of people we want to minister to is if you're here and you know you are maybe wala kang relasyon sa Diyos meaning you believe in God but pero walang fear of God in you walang love of God in you but you know you know the God that we serve this triune God wants to commune with His people wants to be in a relationship with His people to transform them and to bring them to life if that's you, wala ka bang relationship with God, I want to ask you to make a simple gesture of commitment saying, Lord, that's me. I want to commit my life to you. Figo yun, can you raise your hand? Don't think of the person beside you. That's you. I'm going to count one to three. With all heads bowed down. Wag mong isipan yung katabi mo. You know, God has been speaking to you. And today, you know, that's you. One, Two, three. Raise your hand if that's you. Saying, Lord, I'm going to take a step of faith to believe in you and to trust you today that you have a plan for me. We're going to wait a few more seconds. There you go. If you want to make this commitment today, I want you to pray with me. I want you to believe that God hears as you pray this prayer. Lord, today, I put my faith in you, put my trust in you. Or maybe first time lang dito na invite ako, or maybe I've been attending for quite some time. And yet, Lord, maybe before I have things that hindi ko may surrender sa'yo, hindering me from entering into a relationship with you. But today, Lord, I surrender my life to you. And I receive, Lord, your love, your forgiveness, your finished work on that cross. Lord, today, transform my life. Today, God, transform me, all of me, I give to you. Be my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We give God praise.